What the? What the? There it is, guys. We got our tent, garage, pop-up garage. You know, we got two hours of daylight left, so we should probably get to it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this is the other Shelter Logic tent that my dad got. This one clearly was not rated to the same weather rating as hopefully the one that we got. So this is what we got. All the steel, nicely packaged, I like that. Got our canvas. This is the uh, the first, I think it's like a 14 mil or something like that. Pretty thick, feels pretty durable. Whew. Lots of nuts and bolts to do. Where are the directions? <laughs> got the instructions right here. 12 by 20 by 10. Let's get down the frame. Let's get to it. I'm gonna show you guys the difference in steel quality. This stuff, it's a uh, thinner, it's painted in white. Doesn't look as beefy as this does. Side by side comparison. Yeah, I think there's a diameter difference and this is significantly heavier than this. Much better steel. Hopefully it'll stand the elements. So the directions are kind of showing us a general assembly of the ribs. And so what we're gonna do is, uh, you know, follow the directions as best as possible, but they give you all the measurements and stuff like that. They're all labeled with part numbers. So we're hoping to breeze through this pretty quick. Right now we're just kind of laying this one out at like a wall assembly, then we're gonna stand it up. As you can see, we haven't got very far and we're losing daylight, but it kind of sucks because the bolt holes, some of them don't line up perfectly. I'm assuming because there's variation in the bending and the cutting of the pipes, and then they assemble the whole thing and they drill it, but they don't individually label each piece. You end up with slight variations in the holes lining up, and so we have to go through with a little drill and just, just take a few millimeters or whatever you want to say, thousands of an inch off to get the bolts through. Kind of sucks, but uh, you know, that's kind of, that's how it is. You know, they're not CNC printed or uh, CNC machined or 3D printed. So you're going to have variations like that. I think that'll be Big. high enough. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I think that'll be tall enough. I definitely I would hope so. <laughs> In a strange turn of events, you, half of this is assembled. Jackie appeared and it started snowing. By the way, this is the same day. What do you need help with? I don't think you guys can see it, but the frame is up. This thing is huge. It's going to be awesome. It's day two of working on this thing. I shoveled out some of the snow the other day that we had. And uh, luckily, we're in the dead of ice fishing season. So she's about uh, seven degrees this morning, something like that. Yeah, Five yeah pretty cold. Nor uh, south of 10, that's for sure. South of 10. Now, that raises some issues today because we want to try to get the spikes in. The ground's a little frozen. Is, yeah. So we don't know exactly what type of material, tools, whatever we're going to need. So right now we are just going to be starting with a uh, sledgehammer. Handheld. Yeah, four pound sledgehammer. S-Wing just bought it, dude. She's new. And then we're going to drive those in and hopefully get the uh, canvas on this thing. I, I mean, we're also going to try to get the boat today too. We're trying to do a lot. Today's tail of the tape brings us S-Wing hammer. This is the anchor. This is actually pretty interesting. I thought they were going to just, just use standard spikes, but this is like an anchor that you put a spike through. We just have rebar we're going to try out. Uh, I think this is half inch rebar. It slides right in here and then you drive the stake into the ground. Pull this out if we can <laughs> and the anchor should lodge itself sideways and hold the whole unit down. Here's the illustration of that. Pound that thing into the ground. It turns sideways in the ground, locks her in place, and then wraps around one of the, uh, the edges of the pole there. Things to keep in mind when you're whale hunting in New England. You want to get this right in the butt. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. It's not whale hunting. <laughs> it does look like it, dude. We're going to go get Moby Dick. 
Instructions say we should be pile driving this thing in. <laughs> right? Why is that so funny? <laughs> the ground is definitely hard. And we're also going through some nice quality stone that's been laid here, packed in there. I can feel that vibrating under my feet. God. Oh, God. All right, I don't know if rebar was the best idea. The uh, rebar is now stuck in this thing. Mistakes were made. Cool thing about permafrost, have you guys ever heard about the Big Dig? <laughs> <laughs> you know, little tidbit of information, all right? The Big Dig, they use permafrost to freeze the railroad ground, the ground underneath the railroads so they could dig under it. It gave it structure so that the railroads wouldn't fall into the tunnel when they were building it. Probably the first time in New England history anybody's ever tried to make the ground cold during the summer. What we ended up doing, guys, is we got some tube sand. The ground is too frozen and we could spend hours, you know, trying to heat up the ground and make it work, but we're just going to put some tube sand and uh, hopefully that'll be good enough. Tube sand is always the answer. These are 60 pound sandbags. We're going to tie the middle ones in, but that's, uh, it's not like incredibly heavy, but it's better than nothing, right? 360 pounds plus the weight of the frame. I think it'll hold us over until we get those spikes in. Yeah, hopefully we'll be okay. Famous last words though, right? smash cut to this thing being like toppled over. Okay, so I guess the directions kind of have you do, you know, build it and then kind of disassemble it. On the back and the front, you have to take off the mating points to loop on the canvas. We have one part on. To undo the two lo lower, like left and right, and then we got to do the front in the same way. Thing I'm not 100% happy with is the way that this just this back piece goes on like yeah we could spend like an hour shimmying this thing and trying to like tie it down to the corners there but at the end of the day this just these cuts not only are they like jagged but they're I think they're very oversized so you have all these penetrations it just seems like these ones are just overcut letting a lot of air and water in you know I mean, it's not the end all for sure, but for a $2,200 product, which is basically just some canvas and bent steel, it's good steel, it's good canvas. These are just oversized. This is, I don't know, I'm not the expert on it, but I think that could use a little refinement. Okay, so since uh, we use their straps and the ratchets, it does actually tighten it up pretty nicely. Still think the holes are a little bit oversized, but it, it does work pretty well. Better than we thought? Yeah. <laughs> what, the, what just happened? <laughs> There's a gap between the two, you know? Right. It's a shelter. It's a shelter. <laughs> That's a nice zipper. Focus in the thing there. Is that a Velcro piece or something? Or is that not coming back? Maybe it'll... I don't know what's happening. It's already warmer in here, dude. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I'm feeding it to them, folks. Oh, too far. Too far. A little bit more? Hold on, load. Hold on, load. 
Ready? Far. Far. <laughs> Last round. Far. I just got to ratchet strap this down, tighten the top. Sure. Looking good. This is actually kind of cool. So there's rods that go down the bottom of that one and the bottom of that one. And then there's four ratcheting straps that go on each side and it kind of pulls the tent into alignment. I like that. That's good. It's neat. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Roland's remote start. Incorporated. <laughs> How far are you want to go? We'll do the other side. So these rods go on the outside, right? Yeah, I don't think there's a way that we could get them on the inside. I don't know, can you push yours this way a little bit? Ow! <laughs> There's a dumb move to put my hand there. Go ahead, push more. All right, all right. How's that? We're just trying to tension the top canvas so that snow doesn't build up on it. We come up with this technique of kind of hanging on it and pulling the canvas over the front rail. Good. Woo. She's getting there. Good. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot tighter, dude. Got her pretty good intentioned. Yeah, she's tight as a drum now. Well done. You too. <laughs> We're gonna get a boat in her and then I'll give my final review, my short term review anyway. Obviously, it's gotta hold up to the weather. Jake's quote was, it didn't get any warmer when the sun went down. It didn't. <laughs> Gotta get this bad Larry home. Let's do it. Yeah, I was just thinking like, oh man, we're driving around like, I'm like, what do you mean then? There's a fuel tank in the car, so. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think she runs on? Stop. Taking her out in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Brought her in the snow, took her out in the snow. She's going to her home now. We got her all loaded up. Hopefully uh, this oh goes Oh my God, smoother. I'm gonna have to back this all the way down your driveway. Yeah. Uh. And um, I'm leaving that stress to Jake because he has more experience more doing it. Cars. <laughs> We're definitely I'm at least cars. getting my car out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna show you with the blinking lights because we're not gonna have light after this, but <laughs> <laughs> there it is in all its glory in the tent and everything. We'll come back when it's daylight and give you a better look. Good job, Jake. Yeah, we did it. It's been about three days. We ended up getting, I don't know, about a foot of snow. She's still standing. I'll show you inside now because it's daytime. Ta da! Pops has got the snow blower in here. No snow on this bad, Larry. There's some snow on the roof and you can kind of see. The areas where it's sitting, there's a little bit of condensation up there. I think we'll be okay. You know, it's probably good practice to pull that off or get in the boat, try to knock it off. So it's time to give this shelter a rating. I think I'm gonna give it two ratings. No, three rating. Yeah, three rating. We're gonna do an assembly rating. We're gonna do a material quality rating and then just an overall rating out of 10. So first, the material. I went with the 14 ounce canvas. It's pretty durable. I think this will be able to hold up you could go with, there's a one notch higher, I forget the exact ounces, but the other material that's in this, which is, there's only three materials, there's galvanized steel, and then there's the canvas, as well as bolts, I guess you can consider that too. The steel, really good stuff. The steel is top grade, definitely gonna hold up. It's not like the tent that collapsed behind here, which is my dad's. Big price difference though. You know, this one was a couple grand, the one behind was about 600. So something to keep in mind, you know, that. That didn't even last one snowstorm. This lasted probably the biggest snowstorm of the year. We don't even have the stakes in the ground. It's just held down with sandbags. So I think the overall durability comes down to the good materials that were used. And then also the structure of it. This is a round top and that round top is gonna help keep that snow off and stop it from just crushing the structure. Now we can talk about assembly. You gotta read the directions thoroughly and understand them really before you start this. My only gripe is, you know, I wish there was a little bit more 
text to the instructions. A lot of it was pictures. I would have liked little explanations and stuff like that. Other than that, it's not bad. Definitely was some frustrations when trying to assemble it. I think there could have been maybe some of those like push buttons or Velcro in some areas just to hold it, the canvas as you're assembling it. The steel did have some irregularities but that's to be expected when you're getting like this type of product it's all looks like it's all hand bent and cut and so it's not a 3d printed or cnc machine type thing so you're gonna have some deviations just bring your drill you'll get through it so i want to go over some of the things that i thought were issues or things that could be improved upon uh, number one were the cutouts where the poles would stick through the canvas they're pretty jagged they look like they were cut by hand and they're probably a cut a little bit oversized. Although when you pull everything together, they kind of tighten up a bit, but an area to improve on that I did mention earlier in the video. Another thing is that when I got the garage door up, there was actually one part that seemed to have been sewed shut. So I did have to cut part of the canvas to get full usage of both sides. So that was a little weird. I'll even show you right here. As you can see, there's a little bit of extra material there. And I just had to cut that in order to open up the door. My last thing is, and this could come down to kind of installation type error as well, is the part where cable or strap goes through this canvas and you ratchet it down to these endpoints. When you're ratcheting it, this part can tear and it has on ours a little bit. I don't know if you, you can't really see in there. That tore because the strap is pulling so much on this. So maybe a little bit of reinforcement in that area would be nice. That's pretty much my gripes with this. I would say I give the quality of material an eight and a half. The assembly, I'd give it a seven and a half, uh, just because I would like to see a little bit more verbiage in the instructions. And the overall score, guys, I think it's a nine. It comes with a 10 year warranty. You know, obviously if none of these trees fall on it, whatever, like it should hold up to the elements and it's gonna be the down of the frames home for the next indefinite amount of time. So it was much cheaper than going out and having to find a huge shed or build your own garage or anything like that. It was much faster, much cheaper. Shout out to Shelter Logic for a great product. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. And we'll see you next time in Down of the Frame.